Now, let's look at the university's review. You've made this announcement. How, first of all, this is what you've been focusing on this week. Yeah. How do our universities stack up internationally? Oh, we've got some of the best universities in the world. Uh, look at the top 100 universities and it's full of Australian universities. Um, they, they do an extremely good job. The evidence of that is look at how many people come from all around the world to study here. Yeah. The research we do is first class as well. What this review is about is how do we make sure that we set them up for the next 10 years and the next 20 years. Um, you know, if we went in a time machine back to when you and I were born in the western suburbs of Sydney, there's only a handful of unis, only about 7% of Aussies had a uni degree. Now, if you fast forward to today, we've got about 40 unis. More than a million Australians are at uni at the moment. I mean, about... How have they held up during the, the pandemic? Because a, a lot of foreign students unable to come here. Yeah. yeah. Have some, they struggled? Some, some did it tougher than others. And uh, international students were basically told to go home. And so a $40 billion industry was kneecapped. It was cut in half. It's coming back. But just, just let me just finish this point about what the future of universities are going to be. We're told that nine out of ten jobs in the, in the coming decade are going to require you to finish school and then go to TAFE or go to uni. So universities and TAFEs are going to be more important in the years to come than they have been in the past decades because you, know, you won't just be able to finish school and get a job. You've got to finish school and then go to TAFE or go to uni. So a big part of this review is how many people do we need to have a university degree mm. and what are the priority areas where they need to focus? You're going to India next week. One of the things that I guess you'll be hoping for is further Australian university campuses. Yeah. How, how promising is that looking over the next few months? We, I'm heading to India with about 11 vice-chancellors uh, to sign a mutual recognition agreement of qualifications. At the moment... We've so what does Australian, that mean, well, well, mutual recognition of qualifications? It, it, it means it'll make it easier for Australians if they do a degree in India for it to be recognised back here in Australia and vice versa. Um, you, you make the point about campuses. There's Australian universities in India at the moment that run courses embedded in Indian universities. Deakin and Monash and La Trobe are examples of that. This is about the potential to open campuses. So going from, from running courses to opening campuses. And the University of Wollongong is a good example of that. So you don't need a foreign... It's not just foreign students that travel here to study. They'll be studying in, in That's exactly India, right. but at an Australian institution. Yeah. So, so think about India, the world's biggest democracy, 1.4 billion people, half a billion people under the age of 23. And the Indian government has an education plan where they want half of all young Indians to either go to vocational education or higher education by 2035. You know, we think about the education challenges we've got here. Think about that. We're talking about hundreds of millions of people going to the equivalent of TAFE or university. They can't do it all on their own. Not all Indians are going to have the money to come to Australia or another country to study. And so they've said to us, what can you do to help? And one of the ways to help is to run courses in Indian universities, but another opportunity that's now campuses. emerging is to set up campuses. How many are we talking about? Oh, potentially a couple of universities who could do this. The first out of the blocks is the University of Wollongong that's keen to set up a university in Gujarat. And I'll be joined next week by Adam Gilchrist, former test captain, who's now a global ambassador for the University of Wollongong. They wouldn't like him much in India, would they? Well, I was checking the other day. We haven't won a test series in India since 2004. And the captain back then was Adam Gilchrist. So they'll get it. You'll get the cameras to the news conference at least. So what, what about the issue of diversifying? I can, I can assure you, it's not, a, it's not a conspiracy though to get Adam into the country to, to resurrect our chances no, in the next. We, yeah, we could do with him. But <laughs> is, is this all about diversifying away from China? We have, I think, about forty percent of our international students in higher education coming from China. I think there is a fantastic opportunity to, to educate more Indian students, but also students from Indonesia and from Vietnam as well. So that's a big part of it. Jason Clare, thanks as always. Appreciate it. Thanks, mate.